Introduction to Raft on Fabric. In this short video, you will learn how the Raft consensus works on Hyperledger Fabric. Hi, my name is Raj. I'm the author of Hyperledger Fabric Network Design and Setup course. And this video was created by combining short parts of my lectures in the course. I hope you find this video useful. I've divided this video into two parts. In part one, I'll give you a quick introduction to Raft. And then in part two, you will learn how Raft works in a fabric network. Let's start with part one. A Raft node may be thought of as a finite state machine. The Raft node is also referred to as the consenter. A Raft cluster consists of three or more Raft nodes. The consensus in the cluster is managed by way of communication between the Raft nodes in the cluster. The nodes in the Raft cluster elects a leader in the cluster. The other nodes in the cluster are referred to as the Followers. At any point in time, the cluster can have only one leader. This leader receives the commands or the transactions from the Raft cluster clients. These commands lead to the creation of the log entry in the finite state machine managed by the leader. And then the leader replicates the log entry to the followers in the Raft cluster. Let's talk about heartbeats now. Leader sends periodic heartbeats to the followers. And if the followers do not receive this periodic heartbeat, they mark the leader as a dead leader or a leader which is unresponsive or unavailable. At that point, the follower proposes themselves as a candidate to become a leader and ask for votes from the nodes in the cluster. The candidate that gets the most votes from the nodes in the cluster becomes the leader in the cluster now and starts to receive the commands from the clients. Quorum is defined as the minimum number of Raft nodes that need to agree on a transaction or a log entry to be added to the finite state machine managed by the Raft nodes. Consider this five node cluster. In this cluster, three out of five nodes must agree on the log entry or transaction to be logged in the finite state machine. In a cluster of three nodes, two out of the three nodes must be available and agree on the log entry to be added to the state machine managed by the raft nodes. So what this means is that to operate a raft network, you need a minimum of three nodes in a cluster. If the number of nodes in the raft cluster go below three, your raft cluster will become unstable or unavailable. The followers in the raft cluster are aware of the node acting as the leader. Raft clients can submit the transaction to any node in the cluster and that node routes the transaction to the leader node. As a result, the Raft client views the Raft cluster as a single state machine. It does not have to know which Raft node is acting as a leader. Next, I'll explain to you how a leader is elected in a Raft cluster. When the Raft cluster is launched, all of the nodes send out a proposal as a candidate to become the leader. And the node that gets the most votes become the leader. In this case, as we see, S5 has become the leader now. Periodically, it sends out the heartbeats to all of the followers. As long as the leader, which is S5 in this case, sending out the heartbeats, it stays the leader. Now let's stop this node to simulate a situation where the leader has stopped sending out the heartbeats. At this point, the followers will send out a request for votes. And in this case, S3 sent out the request for becoming a leader. He got the most votes and it has become the leader in the network. Now that you understand how the Raft consensus algorithm works, let's talk about how Raft works on Fabric Network. The Raft node functionality is built into the order of binary. This Raft node manages the current state and in the case of fabric network it manages the state of the fabric network the log entries in the log has the fabric transactions that act on the data managed in the fabric network the raft cluster for fabric network requires three or more order instances to be set up the raft nodes within the order instances communicate with other instances in the network by way of TLS enabled gRPC protocol. One important point to note is that for each channel in the fabric network, there is a raft cluster 
which operates independent of the raft cluster for other channels let's say you have a network which has five order instances so for channel one there will be a raft cluster and for channel two there will be a raft cluster which is independent of the raft cluster for channel one what that means is that for the two channels there will be different leaders for example for channel one a may be the leader and for channel two order c may be the leader these raft clusters will continue to operate independent of each other let's say in channel number one the order a goes bad in that case within channel number one the followers will elect a new leader this election process in channel number one will have no impact whatsoever on channel number two next i'll walk you through how the transactions are routed in a raft based network this is a logical representation the underlying implementation is much more complex let's say there are three organizations organization a b and c each of these organizations are hosting an instance of an order which is part of a raft network when the leader will be elected in this raft network the followers will be informed about who the leader is in this particular scenario order instance in organization b is acting as the leader now let's say an administrator in the organization a wants to execute some chain code in that case they'll submit the transaction to a local order which will inform the peer client who the leader is in this case the leader is b and then the peer client will submit the transaction to the leader order instance all of this process is transparent to the administrator or the application as it is handled by the underlying fabric client raft setup requires configuration to be carried out at the network level and the organization level at the network level order type and consenters need to be defined in the config.tx.yaml file and the information that you provide in the config.tx.yaml file is then embedded in the genesis block for the channel at the organization level the org administrators have to make updates to the core.yaml and order.yaml they need to enable the tls for peer instances and the order instances and in the order.yaml file they need to define the parameters under the cluster section in order.yaml file thank you for watching this video i hope you found it useful for more information on my hyperledger fabric courses please visit my website bcmentors.com courses